Welcome to the initiative HP Online Teaching Assistant by HP Education. Today, we will explain how to evaluate with co-rubrics. Co-rubrics is an add-on that appears in Google Spreadsheets and serves to generate rubrics that we can easily use to evaluate, co-evaluate, and self-evaluate. So for this, all we need to have is a Google Education account, and we can access it in two ways, either from Google Drive or from Google Sheets. I'm in Chrome from my institutional account, and I'll show you how to access it from Google Drive. We go to the nine dots, and all our applications appear here. Search for Drive and enter. Once inside, I'm going to create a blank Google Sheet from here. Where do we find co-rubrics? Easy, on the ribbon. We go to Add-ons, and I already have it installed, as you can see. To download the add-on from this Add-ons tab, you click on Get Add-ons and type co-rubrics in the search engine. You will see the application, so click on it to install. It's straightforward. Once the application is installed, we can start to use co-rubrics. The first step would be to create the template. The second would be to distribute the questionnaire to assessment for students to assess or self-assess or for us as teachers to assess ourselves. And the last step would be to review the assessments and publish the results. Let's start. Click on Create Templates on Co-Rubrics and notice that we get a reminder. When we create templates in Co-Rubrics, this will delete all existing spreadsheets. That is to say that the recommendation here would always be to start with a blank spreadsheet to avoid losing something we were working on. I click Yes. This is in the template that is generated by default. As you can see, we have three sheets within this spreadsheet. We have Rubric, which is where I'm at right now, Students, and Teachers. Let's look at them one by one. In Rubric, we have five rows for the evaluation criteria, or as they put it, aspects to evaluate and we have four columns corresponding to the levels at which each criterion will be evaluated. Here, we can do and undo as we wish. This is a template, and you can modify it until you are comfortable with the final result. For example, I could take this row here, then copy and paste it if I want to include an additional evaluation criterion. Or, we could also delete these rows and would have four aspects to evaluate. And the same goes for the levels. I could add a level or delete it. I'll delete one. Important to keep in mind that the sum of the weights of each aspect to be evaluated must equal to 100. As I had four aspects, we see that the sum of this is 80. So I have to make the adjustment saying that this first aspect will have a weight of 25 and the second of 35, so it will sum 100%. To modify each of these items, we simply click on the cell and start typing. Something very important to keep in mind at this point if we make this rubric in Word, Excel, PDF, or any other document and directly copy the text to co-rubrics template, it could generate errors because at the time of copying and pasting, hidden characters might be added that co-rubrics will not be able to interpret correctly. It also happens with line breaks. If I make a line break here, co-rubrics will not understand this. Therefore, we shouldn't introduce line breaks in any of the cells of the description. If it's not functioning, we can perform this action. We select these three cells, which we do not know their format, but we will go to Format and click on Clear Formatting. As you can see, it leaves the cells directly unformatted, and then I can put whatever I like in them. That would be in terms of the creation of the rubric. Now we go to the Students tab. Here I can insert the student's name. For example, Student1 and his email. In this case, student1 at grupo-ae.com. Or, you could also add a group 1 and put the emails of the students who form part of this group. For example, there is student 2, student 3, etc. Usually, a class can have up to 25 to 30 students, in which case this task of entering emails manually can become a bit tedious. So what can we do? Import students from our Google Classroom. Now let's look at the last sheet of teachers. As in the student sheet, I can enter the teachers one by one with their mails or, as I already said, import them. So I go to Add-ons, click on Co-Rubrics, click on Import Students and Teachers from Google Classroom. Now we see this window where it asks us from which class do we wish to import contacts. In this case, I'll select 4th grade biology. Once selected, we click on Import. This takes a few seconds to appear in the sheet. 
As you can see, they have been imported correctly. I appear here. The two students I have in this class appear here, and on the teacher page, I appear. If there were more teachers in this class, they would appear here too. Well, once you've created the rubric and added the students and teachers, let's move on to the second step, which would be to create the form and share it. To do this, we go to the Add-ons tab, click on Create the form to evaluate with the rubric. We name the form, I'll put Evaluation Delivery Final Assignment. If we want to mark as mandatory the responses of all aspects of the rubric, I'll tell it Yes. This means that students will have to mark all aspects to be evaluated, Otherwise, it will not let them send the questionnaire back. We wait a few seconds while it creates the form. Once the form is finished, I can share it with my students. For this, I have three options. One, from here, I can send the form to the students. That is to say that an email would reach all those who appear in the list of students and teachers sheet. Two, the second option is to get the form link and then email it to them, or via WhatsApp, Moodle, Edmondo, or however I communicate with my students. Three, and the last option would be to post the form link to my classroom as an announcement. It would be directly into the stream of my biology class. I'm going to go with the third option. Now it asks me in what class I want to make the announcement. So I select biology. It also asks for a text for the announcement. I'll type evaluation delivery final assignment and ready. Perfect, it's done. Now I'm going to go to one of my students' Google Classroom to evaluate it. This is my biology class, and from the stream tab, as you can see here, the announcement of the course evaluation with the respective form appears here. Let's look at the form. The first thing I have to define is who I'm going to evaluate. Let's say Louisa just presented, then let's evaluate her. All students will have this same dropdown so they can evaluate their peers. Well, I would go to each of the aspects to evaluate, and according to my perception, I'll give a rating. I'll do it quickly. When I'm done, I can include any comments I think appropriate and send. Now I'll self-evaluate. It is exactly the same. According to my performance in the presentation of the final assignment. Concerning the evaluation criteria, I would put myself a grade. I finish filling it out and I click to send. Now I'm going to go to Google Classroom from the teacher's account and I'm going to do the same. In Stream, you will find the announcement of the form. I enter, and as a teacher, I will evaluate Louisa. I fill it out quickly to see the results that would be part of the last step I mentioned at the beginning. Here, the important thing is that both teachers and students can fill out the form, once for each student or group previously created in the template. I have already sent the answer, so I'll take the time to evaluate another student, fill it out quickly, and send. Once we have finished evaluating each other, we return to the co-rubric spreadsheet and now do the final calculation of the entire evaluation. To do this, we go to Add-ons, Co-rubrics, and as you can see, a new option has appeared here, which is Process the Responses of the Form. Click on it and you'll see how a new page appears at the end. Now we are going to evaluate over what number we are rating. We can indicate it to be 5, 10, or 100. I'll suggest 10. We click Accept, and on this basis, it will start doing all the valuation. As you can see, it will be creating the whole structure of the valuation. In the columns, we'll see each of the aspects to be evaluated with their respective weight. And in the rows, the students' names will appear. Let's look at it calmly. Here we see the detail, for example, Louisa has been evaluated for one classmate. That's why one appears here. She has also been evaluated by the teacher, but she has not self-evaluated and that's why nothing is shown here. Student 1 has self-assessed and was evaluated by the teacher, but has not received an evaluation from his peers. Now here is the number corresponding to each level assigned to you in the co-evaluation, self-evaluation, and teacher evaluation, according to each of the aspects to evaluate. This number would be the average. For example, if 25 companions had evaluated Louisa, the average score given by the 25 companions would appear here. In this column, the quantitative note counting the lowest item will appear. In this case, the lowest score was 2, then 2 over 3 points that corresponded to the highest level, by 10, 
which is over the number we are rating, giving us 6.67. The next column uses the weighted average of the items. That's to say the co-evaluated grade would be the sum of the results of each of the values of the aspects in co-evaluate, divided by 3 and multiplied by the weight that has the aspect. That would give us this result. And it's the same with self-evaluate and teacher evaluation. I repeat, here we take into account the weights of the aspects and the score on which we are evaluating, which would be a score of 10. This column corresponds to the overall grade. That is, it is the sum of the result of the weighted average of each item, multiplied by the corresponding weight that appears here. And that gives us the final grade. We can change these percentages, for example, say we don't want to count the student's self-assessment, so we put zero here and modify the other percentages to give 100%. That would be the new grade. So as you can see, I can make modifications and automatically calculate the new grade. And in these other columns, the comments of the teacher and students will appear. What else can we do in co-rubrics? We can see the results graphically. For this, we go to Add-ons, Co-rubrics, and select the option to show the results with graphs. A new sheet will be created with these graphs for each student. And according to the colors, it tells us if it's a co-evaluation, self-evaluation, or teacher evaluation, and the levels for each of the aspects to evaluate. So it's another way to do a more visual analysis. To finish, we go back to the grade sheet. Then I have my grades here and I want to publish them. We can do it in different ways, similar to when we were going to share the form. For this, we go to Add-ons, Co-Rubrics, and these are the three options we have. 1. Send them directly to students' emails. 2. Create a document with the results and then share it with my students wherever I want. 3. Or publish the final grade in Google Classroom. I'm going to show you the first option. Then a menu appears to indicate what we want to send. For example, I want them to receive a weighted average and that they only receive the evaluation corresponding to their peers. I select this. I also want them to receive the overall grade. I can say yes to the graphics, but in this case, I'll leave it as don't send. Also, if you want, you can select these to receive the comments. And finally, select the recipients. If we had groups, we could say that it reaches only one person from each group, and we send. If you choose the option to publish the grade in Classroom, keep in mind the following. You will get a menu similar to the one we saw now, where you are asked in which class you want to publish, the name of the task, a description, if you want, the grade you want to publish, and you get the checkboxes to indicate what type of assessment you want to publish. If we select all four, self-assessment, co-assessment, teacher assessment, and final grade, it will appear as four different tasks with their respective grades. So my suggestion is, if you're going to do it from classroom, just select the overall grade. Now we go to the email of one of the students to see how they receive it. Here it is, and that's how the students would see it. This will be all for today. Thank you for watching this video offered by HP Online Teaching Assistant, an initiative of HP Education.